Hey everybody, my name is Andre Salazar, and you're watching The Art of Comics. Thank you. Thank you all very much for checking us out. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching my videos about comic books, and today we're going to talk about something that I am super excited about. It is powers. Yeah, powers, dude. Powers. Um... So, as far as me, what's going on, I'm working on some new comics, Shangri-La States. I'm still banging that. I'm on page 50. Just started Boaz. I'm also coloring a comic called uh, Cannibals on Mars and a couple other little things. So, I'm working, busting my hump, but I'm also reading comics. When I'm not making them, I'm reading them. A lot of it is just for education. And then there's sometimes I read for fun. This damn comic book, Powers, is not homework to me, okay? There are some comics back here that I love that feel like it's work. There's some homework involved. There's some elements of like, I gotta get through this because I know it's good, but I gotta get through it. This is, for me, pure fun. This is The Wire. This is a procedural cop show. I love, this is like The Shield, that I love The Shield. This is like that. This is Powers, and I love it. And let's talk about it, okay? Um, so Powers started 2000, around the same time as Top 10, actually. So Top 10 by Alan Moore with America's Best was coming out, and uh, Michael, um, Michael, Avon Owing and Brian Michael Bendez got together and said, we're going to do this cop comic about superheroes and capes and comics. There's actually a comic book called Capes as well, which was, I think, more of like a... And then there was like a superhero happy hour. There's all these like around this time where superheroes at a bar, superheroes on this, superheroes that. And so this was a superhero procedural cop show. Um... And the Alan Moore thing was coming out top 10. There's a little bit of like, oh, should we put this out even though that's coming out? But so different, which we are going to talk about top 10. That reminds me. I got to write that down because I freaking love top 10. Where is it? It's right there. I got to talk about top 10. Oh my gosh. I just saw Planetary. <laughs> we got plenty of time. Okay, we got plenty of time. No stress. So I got this book. This is the bound version. I'll tell you about the, about this in a minute. But this is issue one, signed by Bendez and uh, Oming, and I got this uh, when it first came out in 2000. I just was graduating college over in uh, University of California, Santa Barbara. So shout out to Metro's Comics on State Street in Santa Barbara. I went and picked this up. And while the art at first was like, uh, I don't know about this kind of a cartoon kind of weird style, um, I just like, uh, let's just check it out. Because I liked Bendez because I had read Jinxed. So before this, he, was, he did his own comics. Uh, Bendez actually did the art as well. He did uh, Jinx, Goldfish, Fire, and Torso. Those were his four like self-published books, okay? And they're all very good. Again, I'll say it again. Jinxed, Goldfish, Fire, and Torso. Torso and Jinxed might be my favorite, although Goldfish is good and Fire is good. Came out with those. He got a gig with Todd McFarlane to write Hellspawn. And I think he did some issues of Sam and Twitch. Like that was like a, a mini or a shoot off, Sam and Twitch. He did Hellspawn, like six issues. And then him and Michael Oming did this. Now this was right when Kabuki was out with David Mack. It was kind of like a little team, little crew. David Mack was doing Kabuki, which we gotta talk about Kabuki as well. Um, and then these guys were doing Powers. So, um, love this comic. It's just so much fun. I actually just recently bought this, which is volume two. So they came out in floppies and trades. So they got the trades like these, right? which are just kind of normal trades you would find. Um, first at Image, then at Icon, which is basically, you know, um, Marvel's create-her-own stuff. And then when Bendez went to DC, he said, I want to be able to still do my Jinx World, they call it Jinx World, 
and there was Jinx World. So now Jinx World, another pub, you know, basically another run of these are in these big like omnibus style. So I just bought this like a couple, like two weeks ago and I just started it and my gosh, I just fell back in love with this. It's just so much fun, it's quick. It's just a lot of, it's just fun. It's just a really fun book. So I got this and I barreled through this. So there's been two um, volumes. There's been the first volume by Image and then this kind of second volume. And I didn't know it was still going. It's still going. So I'm gonna buy the other ones. I gotta keep going. It's just so much fun. Um, now, what this is, I'll just share you, and I'm gonna do a separate video on binding, because everyone's been asking me about binding, and please, you know, write in the comments what you want me to talk about. I'll do a video, no problem. So this is a this is a binding I actually got professionally done by, um, I think it was called Capital Binding at the time, if I remember, David Banks. If you're watching David Banks, you're the best. Uh, he was kind of the project manager for all those. And these guys bound, and these guys, you know, there's a lot of binders out there. Some are crappy, like libraries, okay? Some are good, some are crappy. I've now started to do it my own, so I do my own bindings. Uh, they're not quite as good, but it's cheaper, and I like it, and it's fine. Um, and so there's, you know, all types of binding, which that kind of reminds me, I want to do another binding set. Maybe I'll come up with a little project. Okay. I need to read the bindings I made. Uh, and so they did a great job. This is one through uh, 25. And yes, I destroyed the comics, but I don't care because I'm into this. So I ain't gonna sell this. Um, great freaking stuff, dude. Love this book. Let's, um, so we talked about that. Bendez writing this, owing, kept with it the whole time. Still going after 2000 to 20 years, almost 20 years, you know, banging out this book, and it's great. It really is great. Um, why don't we go ahead and dive into some of the issues and just show you what I'm talking about? But if you haven't read Powers, you can find these trades probably pretty cheap. Um, I highly recommend it. It's a really good freaking story, and it's just fun. There you go. If you like procedurals, get this book. Let's dive into it right now and check it out. Bye down. Okay, guys, let's dive down into powers to talk about this book that I love. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna first flip through a few of the pages in the beginning. Back he did in the beginning of the comic in 2000, and, in 2000, and then I'm gonna flip over here to this, which he did uh, like in 2008. So about eight years later. I don't have the most recent stuff, but it's on my Amazon wish list. So we'll hopefully get some of those later. So let's just take a look at some of it. You know, he had a style. He has a style that it was. Not the house style that people usually get. It wasn't typical, you know, uh, image, and it definitely wasn't Marvel or DC. It had this, a little bit of animation flair. In fact, you could tell this looks a lot like the cover of, you know, or an uh, image from Batman, uh, the animated series. Uh, just, I think the lights and the cop and stuff just reminds me a lot of that. And so he had this, I would say, Batman the animated series kind of look. Um, in the beginning here, and we'll see it kind of morph a little bit. But yeah, this is, uh, here we go, dude. This was back when uh, Jam Valentino was the publisher. Um, yeah, this is really freaking cool, dude. Alisa, his wife, is running business stuff, all that kind of deal. And I really like this, actually. I don't remember that. It's kind of a cool skyline with these big blocks of uh, shapes. So... It's a cop show. It is a procedural, okay? And meaning that you're gonna have a case, you're gonna have a whodunit, and we watch the cops figure it out. Main cop being um, uh, Walker, Christian Walker, who used to be a superhero, who's now a just a beat cop or a detective, and then he's gonna get paired up with the wonderful, effervescent, and highly sardonic Deanna Pilgrim. And they become a little bit of a partnership. And uh, one of the great things about this book and their style is Brian uh, is known for being verbose, for being very dialogue heavy, and for that dialogue to being very natural, kind of like a mammoth, you know, style, if, if, if you would say. 
So he's got this very verbose, natural style dialogue. And when you have that much dialogue like that, you gotta figure out a way to put this on the page and still have images, right? So one of the things that Michael does a great job of is really composing the panels and spreads to allow that. And one of the tricks, of course, is repetition. The repetition of the panel so that we can get this story of Deanna talking really works. He's coming in and out of um, si or camera, so we're getting changing size, changing expression here, changing a little bit, but some of these are identical, right? Identical, identical, identical. This is a zoom in of that. So we just change it up a little bit to be somewhat interesting, you know, and keeping this dialogue going. Really great way to do it. Um, you know, he could have maybe done this in a nine nine panel grid, but I don't think it would have worked as well. So he's really great at these. Again, here's another great one, right? And as far as like cost savings time, or just like time savings rather, this is a great idea. Making a comic is so dang labor intensive. If you can find a way to literally cut time, you gotta do it. And look at this, he can literally draw one panel and bang, bang, bang. Nothing is wrong with that. I don't call that lazy, I don't call, I don't have any problem with that. This is the same freaking panel. I have no problem with this. Uh, I needed to use this more in my own work. I need to figure out ways to just do this more. And there's a couple pages actually right now in, in my book I can think of, I do it, I do it twice. But I need to do it more. I need to just have that bang, 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 bang. Because, um, you know, in these moments, it the action is not important. What's important is the dialogue in this tit for tat. So we can have a static image, that's okay. Uh, in fact, if you think about this one panel having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven word balloons in one panel, in a panel that is only one, two, three, four, five, six, sixth width, that's really impressive. And that's not easy to do. I've tried it. So that kind of stuff is really cool. And uh, it's why it's a good way to freaking make comics and learn. Coloring is another great thing. They do come in and add out of um, like a monochromatic things and it's very stylized, the colors. Here we're in this red meeting with, uh, I think Johnny Royale and the um, these uh, mimicky dudes, I forgot what they were called. Um, but the art here, oh and look, these are great word balloons by the way. The art here, he uses a kind of a thin line you know, again, almost like an animation cell, using a thin line with some nice big blacks in there. And it's gonna change as we go. And we're gonna just kind of flip around here. Look at this coloring here. This is really good. I love these. He does a lot of gridded compositions. Uh, you know, nine panel grid is nothing. These guys do three by fives, four by fours, you know, even more. You'll see a lot of gridded stuff. And uh, this guy looks a lot like John Lennon. I don't know if he's supposed to or not. Um, but it's really kind of neat. The story is basically cops, these two particular detectives are centric on heroes. So superheroes. So heroes that are involved in crimes, they kind of are involved in that. And so as the story progresses through the years, there's a time when heroes all superheroes must be kind of outlawed or registered, and these different kind of political environments. Um, this is kind of interesting too. This is Warren Ellis. He's in the comic, which is kind of fun. I think he goes on a ride along or something like that. But notice the art is changing a little bit. He's using thicker brush, brush and line work. And then we go, uh, this is kind of fun. This is very different. So there's a re look at this, one, two, three. This is four by four by four, so this is 16 panels. But he does a lot of double, double spreads. I really need to reread this now because it's been so long. Um, I'm just a huge fan of this guy. And, and it's, it is mature, there are some mature moments um, that we get into this because it's like the shield, it's like the wire in that it's a you know story that is taking place with real stuff, real stuff's going down. 
Uh, okay, there's that too. Um, so I, I do like some of the energy kind of coloring that they do. It's kind of fun. So that's that's this. So really cool panels, really good coloring style, things like that. Let's move to, this is the first two years. Let's now move to uh, kind of in the middle of the comic series. This is volume four, soft cover, and this was retails at 30 bucks, which is actually a really good deal because this is like 20 issues. Um, I got this actually half off at uh, Spiro's Heroes comic shop over there in, uh, in the valley. Hit them up. Um, so now, I don't know if you guys can tell, but if you had them both in your hands, you would see. The art is a little different. The art has changed slightly. Uh, he's using more brush, bigger brush. Uh, there's just more there. I think there's more texture or more, um, just better rendering perhaps in it, but yet he's still using some of the classic conventions of the story. And I don't want to spoil too much, I think this is so good. I, I want you guys to read it, but there's some major changes in the characters and what happens to them. Uh, really good coloring there. I really dig it. Um, and yeah, it's just a really, I love this little like drain bot. They put this in like, they interrogate people in this green colored room, which is kind of drainers. They can't use their powers. Just kind of classic stuff. But see, here's the thing. You might say, oh, well, we've got, there's a bunch of books like that, like The Boys. Um, there's tons of books where superheroes in the real world, Gotham Central, things like that, you know, and we follow cops or we follow some sort of a, you know, crime unit. Here's the deal. This is 2000. In 2000, they didn't have that. That's what this book, I mean, there might have been one or two little indie things, but this book was the big book that kind of put that concept out there, okay? Um, this book did. So you got to give that, you got to give that up a little bit. Um, there was a Sony uh, TV show and they did a couple seasons. I didn't watch it because I didn't have the, the, the streaming service. But I need to just because I, I love the comics so much. I probably will be disappointed. <laughs> but, you know, got to give things a shot. Maybe at least an episode or two. Um, yeah, great stuff. I dig it. Notice now the lettering. He's, you know, they're using now, uh, you know, InDesign or rather Illustrator to do that lettering now. It's not like in the art so much. This is all lettered, yeah, differently now. Um, Really, really kind of neat. I've been following these guys for a long time. This is definitely a guilty, not a guilty pleasure, just a pleasure. And I'm, I'm actually really jonesed to reread these now. And I'm gonna get some, some of the newer, newer issues and kind of follow up and see what's going on because it's just really fun and it's good stuff. And look at, look at this kind of stuff, right? This is just a great kind of composition and way to do a lot of two-page spreads in this book a lot of two-page spreads um which is fun so there you go this is powers you guys are watching the art of comics i'm your host Andre salazar thanks so much for watching checking it out and uh feel free to subscribe you know hit the bell icon so you know when my next videos are i do two a week on tuesdays and Su saturdays and um, spread the word, check out my Patreon, look at my own stuff, that a lot of it is free for you to check out. So thanks a lot, guys.